Now that you guys have some experience with arrays and multi-dimensional arrays, I think we are ready to tackle the next topic about strings. On the screen, I made two variables. One is a character pointer string, and the other one is an array called string. And after that, I printed them out, and they both printed out the same result. So these are some of the ways how you can make a string. Let me show another way to make a string. Another way to make it is we initialize an array, and we manually state what each element will contain. So I have C space, L-A-N-G, exclamation mark, and the null character. So just by looking at this, C doesn't really have a string type. Instead, string is just an array that is filled with a bunch of character types. So one of the common characteristics about string is that it must contain the null character. That null character will also take one byte of memory. Let me show you why this null character is very important. So here, I copy the code from the last code. And so before we enter uh, into the main function, imagine the memory grid is already filled with 252 with the null character. Now let's enter the code. So initially, we are going to assign C space L-A-N-G into the memory grid. Next, we're going to print this out. So if we do print this, well, that because it is not seeing the null character, it will continue to print out until it sees the null character. So when we see the output, it's going to be C space L-A-N-G exclamation mark. And because we didn't include the null character, it will continue reading. So it's going to read 252 in the null character. Now, the null character is not going to be in the output. The art automatically just... The so string is essentially an array in C. So below are some of the ways to initialize it. And, and we've already seen them before. So if you look at the very last initial statement, this time I included the exact number of bytes of the array. So when you do initialize this, make sure you have enough space to put the null character in. So we have to make sure that contains eight bytes of memory. And next, I printed them out and they all printed out the same. Let me show you some more characteristics of a string. So we've already seen this initial statement before. And after that, we are printing two things. So the first one, we're printing the size of the array. And the next one, we are printing the length of the string. So if you look at the size of the array, it's going to give us eight because it will also include the null character. When we are only printing out the length of the string, it will going to ignore the very first null character. So it will print out seven. Let me give you another example. This time, I included the null character in the middle of the string. So I have D space LA, the null character, and G exclamation mark in them. So if we do try to print out the size of this, well, it's going to give us nine, including the null characters. However, if we print out the length of the string, well, it will only include everything except the, except the very first null character. So it's going to be C space LA, that's four. This time I wanna show you how we can access the string um, using indexes. So I made a string called my string, and then I made a for loop. It will iterate until it reads the very first null character. So in the for loop, we are printing each element out and it's going to print out C lang. Let me give you another example how we can access the character using pointer. So initially I created a string called C lang. And next I have another pointer pointing to the string and it is just called PT. So next, you can make a while loop or a for loop. I made a while loop here. So I said, read everything until the dereference of the pointer not equal to the null. So it's going to print out the character and then we're going to increment the pointer by one. And then we're going to keep doing this until it reads all character. And if you look at the output, it also printed out C lang. Let's go back to scanf. You might've done something like this here, where you try to input the entire sentence in there into a variable. 
However, when you try to print it out, you only got the first word of it. Now let me teach you how you can store the entire sentence into a variable. This is just one example. There are multiple other ways to do it, so you're always welcome to try out new ways. So here, if you look at the code, we are first initializing two variables here. So we're initializing my string, and this will eventually point to a resulting string. And right now, it's going to point to null. Next, we are making a length variable of length. And first, we're going to start off with 0. Next, we made a character variable called c. And now what this while loop does is it will read in every input that you put in there until it reaches the new line character, which is the enter button. And next, we are putting the null character into the string. And then we are printing it out. And then we are freeing. And this is the example that I used. So I put my name in there, J Kim, and then it printed out my name back. So let me show you how this is actually work. So here's a table. I have length, I have C, and I have my string surrounded by the absolute value, which means the length of the variable, the string variable, and we have my string. And my string is going to contain the input that we're going to put in. So let's look at the while loop. So right before the while loop, length is set to be zero. In the first line of the while loop, well, what get char does, it gets the first character that we use to input. So it's going to read in capital J. Next, we have to increase the size of the string variable. So we used realloc, and now my string is able to take one character in there. So next, we put that character into the string using indices. And then after that, we increment the length by one. Now, let's do this one more time. This time, the get char is going to give us a, lowercase a. Now we have to reallocate memory of my string. So from length one, now we increase the length to two. And then using indices again, we now put letter a into the proper location. Now, the second position of my string will contain letter A. And this process will go on repeatedly until it reads in the new aligned character, which is the enter button that we use. After the while loop, length is now 7. We have to put the null character in the very last position. The very last element of my string is going to be the null character. And now if we print this, we get you enter the J Kim. So this is about dynamic string. Let me show you some pre-built functions from string.h. So we have already seen strlen, which gives us the length of the string. Uh, let me show you two more examples from here. The rest of them, I want you to do some research. Let me teach you about strcpy. Sometimes we call it stir copy. So first, we have to include the libraries. And in order to use stir copy, you have to include two character pointer variables. So dest is the destination and the source is the source that we're copying from. So essentially what we're doing here is we're copying the string of source to the destination. Now the destination will include copy this. Another one I want to show you is strcat. Sometimes we call it strcat or string concatenation. So what this does is that this will combine a string to the destination string. So here, I initialize two variables here. One is a character array variable called dest, and it includes one, two, three, four, and five. And I also initialize a character pointer variable called source, and this includes six, seven, eight, and nine. So if we use their concatenation, the very first one has to be the destination, and the source is going to be the source string that we're going to copy it from. So once we run this function, Destination will now include 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and the null character. So here is one important rule about string functions. String functions, sometimes they will not put the null character in there manually for you. So you have to make sure that you have enough space for the null character to be included. So, if, so let's look at the stir cat. If that 10 
is 9 instead, well, we're not going to include the null character in the very end. So, as I showed you previously, if we do not include the null character, our program will act very funky. So, please make sure you have enough space to include the null character, no matter what.